But here is the Audrey, which served as a steamer here in the South Sound. And this was in, uh, it was built in uh, 1909 as a steamer, and then converted from steam to diesel by Delta Smith. The Delta Smith took in large company of Olympia in the early 40s. So you'll see many of the steamers, again, the vessels being recycled, and uh, you convert one use to another. As long as that wood was good, as long as you're maintaining those vessels, they would go for years and years. And some of the vessels that uh, are coming to Harbor Days this weekend are over 100 years old and still going. Not every launch uh, or everything uh, runs smoothly in the, in the top boat industry. So here is the failed launch in uh, 1914 of the steamer Florence. And this is the tugboat uh, um, Stimson, Simpson in the background. And um, it, um, it, uh, you'll, if you can look closely at this picture, and it's, it's in the book, but you'll see women in their finery and their dresses and guys in their shirts and ties and all of that. They are scrambling like heck to get off this little uh, failed boat. They thought they were going to have a great excursion. It didn't quite turn out that way. And then on the right is the uh, tugboat Lorne, and um, this is the uh, Schooner America. In latter years of the, of the lives of schooners, they were taken and made into lowly barges. So this was a, a wreck of the Lorne and the um, Schooner Barge of America on the rocks of San Juan Island also in uh, 1914. Here everybody's dressed up and probably out on a weekend and looking at this wreck is just another attraction. The Lorne was refloated and had several more years of, of uh, service on the sound. Schooner Barge uh, America, probably rotten at the time, they just left it, uh, let it go. This is the Annie W. This tugboat was in the first Harbor Days event, uh, second Harbor Days event, first tugboat race in 1975 here at Olympia. It was owned by an Olympian, but it also, uh, and it was built um, in the uh, in, in 1914, and as a steamer, and later repowered into into diesel. But it ended up towing barges of sand and gravel from uh, the the pit gravel pit at Stillicum to Seattle for Pioneer Sand and Gravel, and they bought it. But here it's obviously in some type of event uh, at full power. Beautiful picture. This is a favorite picture of my co-author for the Tugboats book, Mark Freeman. And this is the American Tugboat Company from Everett's. Tugs, Mary D. Hume, um, this one here, and the Irene. The Irene was one of the tugs that used to come to Olympia under, um, under um, other owners. But this is a big log raft coming through Deception Pass, taken from the bridge in the 1940s. And you can't see it very well, but there are two tugs here trailing to make sure that the, um, the aft part of that log raft gets through without hanging up on these rocks here. But uh, that is a very, um, that takes a lot of skill to uh, take a log raft through uh, Deception Pass with its uh, very, very uh, strong currents. These are tugboats and they both, in, in terms of fire, uh, they both, uh, Fight fires, uh, this is a uh, warehouse fire on the Tacoma waterfront in 1935. And these are FOSS tugs. There is a Tacoma fire boat, but every time that they had a major waterfront fire in Tacoma, uh, they call FOSS and say, get over here with your tugboats that have fire monitors. Actually, the monitors, those are fire nozzles. They were used basically to clean out the barges from gravel and sawdust and all that. But when the Tacoma Fire Department needed them, they were, uh, they were there. But the other part of the fire uh, situation is uh, right here. And this is the obsolete tug, uh, Daniel Kern, and um, it was, again, burned for scrap um, on the beach uh, north of Seattle. I don't think the Department of Ecology would allow this anymore, <laughs> but this was a very common practice. Those boats were not worth anything. No one wanted to buy them for uh, business use, and so they were scrapped just for the metal that they could get out of them after this was over. This is um, the Fremont Tug Company operation, and Doc, some of you boaters will remember the Doc Freeman Chandler in Seattle at the north end of uh, Lake Union. 
Well, Doc Freeman was Mark Freeman's dad. Here he is shown at 27 years old. He has just purchased uh, this business from Captain B.C. Webster. It's a boat market, which is a boat brokerage and also a small uh, tugboat uh, company, which started in 1905. But um, Doc Freeman bought the business in 1928, and he purchased this old ferry boat, and that became the office, the floating office, at the North End of the Union. The ferry boat isn't there because it was taken over during World War II, but the Coast Guard is a barracks boat and not uh, returned. But um, this, um, they still have their office on the North Shore of, of Lake Union. And this is Mark uh, Freeman. Mark's in his late 70s now. This thing was a little kid. This looks like it has his name on the side of this boat here. That says Marquette. Just so happens that uh, you didn't see that part. But here's Mark uh, when he was uh, 15 on his first tugboat, the Seal Rock. And some of you know that the way some people get involved in uh, tugboat activities is to, um, is to get involved in uh, log patrol work. Mills lost their logs and threw toes and all that. And the small kids and small companies would have the log patrol. They go out and get the log patrol boats and um, get money for each one of those logs they return to the mill. That's how they made their money. These are many of the tugboats that, uh, that Mark has had um, over the years. This one right here is a small 22-foot uh, uh, tug, and uh, it's called the Barf. Mark will not tell me, even though we're friends, been friends for years, I, how that got its name, but you can put your imagination to work. But anyway, that won the small tug races here in the, uh, in the 1980s, um, piloted by Mark's uh, then small son, Eric. Eric is bigger than Mark is now. He weighs about 2, 230, so little Eric is uh, kind of grown up in business. Here's little Eric right here today. And this is Mark. Mark has a um, retired 1941 Coast Guard buoy tender. Mark is a proud Coastie from the mid-50s, and um, he uses that as a cruising uh, tug. And this is his wife, uh, Margie. One of the, some of the tugboats that were developed during World War II were the uh, Mickey, Mickey tugs. Uh, the first tug in this class was uh, designed by uh, naval architect uh, L.H. Lee L. Coolidge in Seattle just before the war. And the, during the war, they built them over the 200 of these tugboats. And after the war, these became, for Foss, Crowley, and many of the other large tugboat companies, the big ocean-going tugs that started them in business, which I, which I was telling you about in terms of redevelopment after World War II. <clears throat> this is uh, the Wander again uh, during her in the 1940s. This, was, this became a Foss tug famous. It was never converted, even in the 40s, to diesel. It was always a steam <coughs> tug. It came to an unfortunate end, as many tugs do, and this is when it was laying uh, over um, on a wreck on the south side of what would be island in 1947. Later, it was towed into Squally Flats and just left on the flats to uh, deteriorate. So it had kind of an ignominious, ignominious end to it. So it's a very proud uh, career. This is the um, Elmore, built in 1890 um, on, um, in Astoria, Oregon, as a cannery tender. And it is still afloat. This is in the mid-80s. It's going through a very expensive uh, rehab now. Still floating, owned by a retired veterinarian from uh, the Tri-Cities. And uh, if you go into the engine room on that tug, it is outstanding. Clean chrome on the engine, and uh, he has really done the one D. Uh, this is the Arthur Foss. It's been down here several times. It's one of the heritage vessels at South End Lake Union, just to show you how big the pistons are in those, in those tugboat engines. This is Ray Quinn. He's a very famous uh, legendary tugboat captain, and uh, he was a captain of a, of a um, tugboat called the uh, Neptune, which started out as a quarantine boat in San Francisco. So you can see many of these boats had very long, interesting lives. These are three tugs that were built in the 70s, and these are the kinds of tugs that took the barges loaded with um, equipment and uh, modules for the um, building of the uh, Alaska pipeline. This is uh, one of the tractor tugs for that Foss built starting in the 1980s. Uh, these are powered by not propellers at the stern of the vessel, but 
egg beater propellers which go down in the middle of the vessel and they are, can turn in their own um, length and uh, they're very maneuverable and those are cycloidal propellers. This is how they're controlled. Instead of having a wheel, a vertical wheel like you would normally have on a yacht or a boat, it's horizontal. And it has on the one side of it uh, a necker knob. Any older people know what a necker knob is? Nobody wants to say that. <laughs> on the wheel of your, of your car in the 1940s, you had a knob which allowed you to steer with one hand. Why would you want to do that? Because you'd want to steer with the left hand of your right hand, so you put your arm around your girlfriend. And <laughs> so they still have, in this very modern, very modern multi-million dollar tub, double necker knob there on the wheel to maneuver the whole thing. This is a wonderful photo by Rob Patterson, our friends uh, who own the tugboat, uh, Joe, and have owned four uh, and restored four by retired tugs through the years. Taken uh, up above at the Cliff House restaurant on Browns Point, looking down at Commencement Bay. But you can see all the Foss, the different kind of Foss tug activities going on in Commencement Bay. Just a wonderful slice of life photo. This is Harbor Days and uh, the, our famous tugboat, uh, Second Man. It was the first tugboat honored in what we call the Lolo tug tradition. And uh, each year, the oldest tug that came to the Harbor Days the previous year gets honored as the Lolo tug. So we can tell a lot about its history and the publication and, and uh, everything we do. It's on t-shirts and Nancy's produce and tote bags and all kinds of things. And this is Fran Schlotman who owned Sandman. He's the one who's uh, excavating a construction company, built the original personal landing, the wooden board walk and all of that. And, Franz used the tug as part of his um, part of this marine construction company. Just a wonderful, wonderful guy. This is uh, the tugboat races, and uh, you've got to be out there to uh, be on the boat to uh, to see them. But um, this is what they're all about. And uh, talks cheap, less race. It's serious business. Bragging rights are very um, are very highly valued by the tugboaters. Unfortunately, sometimes we have a little collision or two. But um, <laughs> that was okay because it was right at the start of the race. Both tugs backed down and nothing really happened. This is a painting of uh, Henrietta Foss built in uh, Tacoma by Foss in 1931. It is still operating. It's been completely uh, restored, not as a working tug, but as a uh, heritage vessel. The big tugs, the little tugs. Here's our RC tugboaters here in Olympia on the left. And here is uh, Bob Peck. Dr. Robert Peck, retired college president, who is a master boat builder. He built um, Smitty J, powered by a 13 horsepower um, diesel or a gas powered engine. That's Bob in the, in the tub. This has been donated to the Olympia uh, South Sound Maritime Heritage Association because they used it in parades and that kind of thing. Here is Joe and Robin and Kay on the bow of their vessel. It's used here in Olympia to help turn around the Virginia Five. Virginia Five will be back here for Harbor Days this year, and uh, Robin and Kay are, are proud to be, as, as Mark said, it was, or as Bill said, it's, the tugboat has just been sold, and, uh, but it's been great to have it here all these years. This is a 155-foot Crowley Maritime Tug Sea Victory. This tug towed the USS Missouri uh, 2,300 miles from Bremerton. Pearl Harbor in 1998. That is a big, big tugboat, uh, very high power engine. These are uh, tugboats uh, from Seattle being used by the Manson Construction Company. There's another shot of um, the Harbor Days. These are, this is a one of Crowley's uh, tugs, Mars, 5,700 horsepower. It didn't tow this, this vessel uh, all the way from Korea where those sections of the new the Narrows Bridge was, um, were built but it did bring that vessel in and, uh, and steadied it as those sections were raised as part of the new uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge. So you can see the tugboats get involved in many activities. This is um, the way tugboats today are launched, no longer down the waves and splash. Put them in a dry dock at uh, in, uh, what, Lake Washington Ship Canal, put them, bring them into Lake Union, take uh, the water or flood the uh, dry dock and they slowly settle and they the boat floats off into, and, is, and is launched. This is a new Foss tub built by Martinac in, in Tacoma and uh, very maneuverable. And as I said, some of these green tubs are um, 
and being built by Foss now. This is the last photo, spectacular photo, aerial photo of the 2007 uh, Seattle tugboat races, and of course one of the cruise ships at Pier 66. So the tugs are still racing in Olympia and in Seattle, and it's a lot of fun. So come on out this weekend, continue our waterfront activities uh, uh, that started with sand in the city, and enjoy one of the hard days this weekend.